Um, I would like to compute next in this example. We already did one example. We did this. Uh, um, we take uh, the Tate resolution of O of P1 Of course, computing syzygies, I might be uh, good uh, to just uh, give the ranks. Write down a Betty table for the syzygy number, a syzygy number, which now are cohomology numbers. So remember, we had one section in degree zero, and two, in, and so this was in degree two in degree one, three here, and then. We had one here, two here, three here, and so on. Right? That was the computation which we did. And here was this map. This map is this quadratic map, is sort of from E0 which E1, right? That was that map. So I just write down the ranks. So what are these numbers? So here I have an I, and in position J. I should put h i of f j minus i in position. I should have put written maybe e in position e. I should put h i of e minus i this number, right? That sort of fits with this formula. So this here really, this one was h one of O of um, minus one minus one, right? According to this formula, this was in position minus one, so this is H1 of O P1 of minus two, which of course is one dimensional. So this example fits with this, uh, with this formula, right? So let's uh, let's do another example. Um, I'm going to again and map into um, take the rational normal curve P1 and P3, but now so let's call this yota, and I take yota lower star of O of minus one. So this is now a sheaf here. So this is my f. And then I can compute. So in degree zero, we have nothing. H zero of that is nothing. In degree one, we have H zero of this twisted by one, which H zero of F of one, which is going to be, well, uh, I have to think about what this one is. Uh, this is h0 of o p1 uh, of minus 1 tensored yota upper star of o of p3 of 1, right? That's what it is. And this, of course, is 2. Uh, this is 3, so this is here h0 of o of p. Um, so this is um, 3 minus 1 is 2. Um, P1 of 2. So the next number here is actually 3. And then it grows by 3. So there are 6, 9, 10, and so on. Right? So, and I can write down again this matrix. It's the matrix here, the 3 by 6 matrix, has uh, 0, uh, 1, E2. E3, E0, E1, E2, E3, E0, E1, E2, E3. Right? That is this matrix. And the next matrix is sort of the same shape. Right? What is the kernel? We know there should be three things in the kernel. Right? Because up here, what is this number? This number is going to be um, H 
uh, one of O P one of um, minus um, so it's um, of course this minus one tensor and now I have to take uh, yota upper star of O of P3 of minus one because I'm position minus one and then another minus one coming from the fact that I have here one here. So this here is going to be H1 of O of minus P1 of O of minus five. This, uh, this is, let's see, is this correct? Uh, uh, what is wrong here? Um, oh no, sorry, here was a zero. I, I have to do this, this position, right? So this is now minus one, minus three. So it's minus four. And this is go going to be a three here. So we have we have to find a three by three matrix which annihilates that. And I'm going to write you down this matrix. The matrix is E0, uh, E1, E0, E2, E0, E3, E0, um, E2, E0, E3, E1, E3, E2, E3, and then E0, E1, E3. It's a symmetric matrix. Let's see. So this column here annihilates that. That's okay, right? This here annihilates that. And then E0, I need an E1, E2 here in the middle. This, on the other hand, is okay, right? This here annihilates that. Okay, so here in the middle, I mean, if you look at the pattern here, uh, there are two guesses, right? One term could be, it could be E0, E3, right? And the other one, it could be E1, E2, which we haven't used yet, okay? And the, the, the right one is E1, E2 plus E0, E3. At this matrix, right? And then, since the matrix is symmetric, uh, and since E is an injective module takes in the dual complex, leaves exactness, and of course then it must be sort of this same complex. So it's going to be three, of course, then it sort of goes down by three, six, nine, ten, and so on. Right? So Who recognizes this matrix? Have you seen such a matrix before? I'm sure you have. <laughs> it's <laughs> half of a Sylvester matrix. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's half of a Sylvester matrix. What is this matrix? So, this is the position of the same. So, you remember there's a resultant formula which goes like if you have a polynomial f, which is a0, x0 um, to the cube plus, plus a3, x1 to the 3, and another polynomial b0, x0 to the 3 plus, plus b3 x1 to the 3 then we have the matrix a0 a1 a0 
up to A3 and then B0, B1 up to B3. So two copies of this matrix, really. Two copies of this matrix, right? Um, and this determinant vanishes if these polynomials have a common root. Now F and G really are Um, span the line in my P3. And what I'm asking is whether my this line in P3 intersects the image. That's what I'm asking. Right? So it really is a shell form uh, of uh, the rational normal curve. So the, the, Vester, the determinant of so the Vesta matrix is a shell form. But the shell form really should only depend on Plücker coordinates, right? It only depends on the pencil. So I have this matrix A0, um, A1 up to A3, B0, B1 up to B3. I should take the 2 by 2 minus. That's right, Ij for the, uh, the, the Plücker coordinate of the pencil. I, Ij, Bi, Bj, right? Of course, the Plücker coordinate is Q. So we could do the following. We could take here this matrix and look, substitutes Plücker coordinates. So 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 2, 0, 3. And here we had 1, 2 plus, and 1, 3 plus 0, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, and here. And one three, right? And we can take the determinant of that, which of course is a polynomial cubic in the a's and cubic in the b's, and it's actually equal to the determinant of that polynomial. So I think you know these both ways to compute the resulting of two um, two homogeneous polynomials of the same degree. This is one way. The Bruchsen is maybe another way. So the names are actually funny because in Sylvester's paper, this matrix doesn't occur. This matrix occurs in paper of Leibniz, but the Bruchsen explicit occurs in Sylvester's papers. He writes it down this matrix. In, in full generality. So this is very nice, right? So we have these two formulas for the resultants and in a certain sense, which I should make precise, one is the syzygy of the other, right? So what's behind that? So I'm aiming to explain that and then um, you see a wealth of applications um, uh, coming from these explicit matrices. So, so, yeah, I just want to point out again, the abstract theory is nice and we have the derived category and everything is very nice, but these concrete examples are also very nice. And they also give you uh, lots of information, other kind of information, rather precise information if you want. So maybe uh, in one of the hours I'm going to write down um, a hyperelliptic or elliptic resultant formula. We could have, for example, a function which is formed by the constants, the Weierstrass p function, Weierstrass p function square, the derivatives of the Weierstrass p functions. We can take two such functions and ask whether they have a common zero in the lattice, right? That would be then an elliptic resultant uh, formula. And we're going to have these kind of formulas. Um, and they will be nice and beautiful. And this sort of works in very gently. So what is really behind this? Behind is a, a functor which I will call U. It used to be in the first paper course it was called omega, but now I call it U. And what I'm going to make is I take the category of free, free E modules. Uh, 
and I'm going to map three E modules to um, Korean chiefs on PN by well I can choose either the E twisted so I'm going to choose omega E to the J is supposed to go to lambda j of u where u is universal subbundle so u is a subbundle which sits in the tautological sequence omega tensor o minus uh, o to o1 right this is a tautological bundle So this here sits inside lambda j of w tensor o, right? And so this is a is a functor on the objects. Now I have to say what it does with multiplication. So I have a multiplication. I'm a little bit um, worried that I got the sign wrong. That's right. We will find out. Um, so I multiply with a in e to the uh, k minus k, the e in lambda kv, right? So this is going to, well, or maybe I want to map in omega e to the i, and that is sort of in lambda k u and this sits inside lambda and uh, uh, yeah it should be an i u i w tensor o and here i con cont could contract so i should be the larger index uh no I, I should be the smaller index so i take here an a contract with a and this should sit in lambda uh, J is the larger one, J minus I of V. Okay, so and uh, so I is smaller, so this is sort of at least it lowers the degree, right? So uh, multi and here I can multiply with A. So A has degree in uh, uh, sits in lambda j minus i of v which is sort of e in degree minus um, i minus j and if i multiply something in that degree i end up in that degree so i think that uh, degrees are right right this is a larger and that is a smaller number so if we switch the sign it wouldn't make doesn't make sense so i define the action of elements by this and then I can apply u of t of f right this is a direct sum of uh, these things right now this here are only non-zero in the range well this is a tautological bundle of rank n so I only can take exterior powers from zero up to n so only in the bounded range so only a bounded range of these terms will occur so this is a bounded complex a bounded complex, bounded complex of free, um, locally free, uh, of uh, vector bundles, which are direct sum of these um, uh, direct sums of the 
lambda j u zero less than equal to j less than equal to n right so this is a bounded um, complex and this is called a Bindlinson complex or Bindlinson monad and then the third so I think this was the second theorem the acyclicity was the um, <coughs> first theorem uh, the second theorem is that um, if I take the homology now I think it's, it's a cohomology complex h star of u of f is concentrated in degree 0 and is, isom and is isomorphic to the chief f itself so from the take resolution I can represent f as a complex uh, in, in, in terms of the lambda i u i right? any sheaf f can be written in, uh, as a complex in these terms in particular the derived category of um, the projective space is generated uh, uh, freely well it's sort of um, spanned by these bundles right you see that again so so this is uh, of course this is a minus and as a result uh, we have a different proof Bylinson uses a spectral sequence Bylinson uses uh, I have Bylinson uses <coughs> I should have uses uh, the form we have a map from u tensor O of minus 1 to O on Pn cross Pn uh, so this is uh, u um, A tensor B is sort of uh, P1 upper star of A tensor P2 upper star of B right and the fact is that the co kernel of that is a diagonal, is O of delta. And so this is the rank N. The diagonal has co dimension N. So delta is a complete intersection in the sense of vector bundles locally of this. And we have the um, resolution of that. So the last term is lambda U tensor O of minus N. The cost of resolution, this is exact. So if we now tensorize the diagonal with the sheaf F, well, we pull the sheaf up, tensorize with the diagonal, and push it down, of course, we get the same sheaf. The other thing which we can do, we can take this complex, tensorize this complex with P1 upper star, and then push it down to the, uh, actually, I so this uh, U of F um, is in Bindingston notation is um, we take uh, um, um, P2 upper star of F tensor O delta I should take the derived uh, so tensor well uh, tensor is this complex oh, this here the okay, and then do uh, uh, pi uh, uh, to one lower star, right? Then uh, the u will drop out because u comes with this push-pull form. Here we get sort of certain cohomology group of f twisted in a certain way, right? And then at least we get a spectral sequence converging to F. In the original version of the book of uh, Konig, Spindler, uh, um, Konig, Schneider, Spindler, uh, they only had the spectral sequence. And people in vector bundles, since they didn't really read the Russian transla uh, original, which actually wasn't really so much available, uh, they had no paper to write on, 
um, the use this spectral sequence. But now this is much more explicit, right? We can compute this complex. We have a complex. It's better than a spectral sequence. Of course, we can make out of the graded complex always spectral sequences. That's n uh, no big deal. But the other way, it's not so clear. And part of Bynington's theorem is that he could prove that you can build a complex. But it's very hidden and very short paper. So we get a very explicit version of that. Now coming back to the um, Schau form, we can do sort of the following. We have P3, we have the flag variety, and we have the Grassmannian. Two, four. In this particular case, we can take F, pull it up here, P2 upper star, and this is P1. Um, and so we can take P2 upper star of F and then take our uh, P1 lower star of that, which is now in the Grassmannian. Right? Would be here, where the Schau form should sit. And what do we do? Well, this object here is the same as a d uh, different functor, the functor. Uh, to the Grassmannian, and um, the Grassmannian I uh, have a universal rank 2 quotient bundle. So I have a universal rank 2 quotient bundle, U uh, inside V tensor O of the Grassmannian, um, universal sub bundle, and universal quotient bundle. And um, this functor also makes sense here. I still have this contraction map. I can p push this down. And then the result is, so this is a U to the Gassmannian. Maybe I should give it a different name of T of F. So we explicitly can compute the derived image complex as a complex, as a specific complex, on the Grassmannian, which is, uh, yeah. So this, I think, is a, 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 is a very nice result, a very strong and nice result. And um, your theorem can be seen in the paper. What kind of paper? Oh, I have. Um, or, or okay, so these are the first two. Um, so I all together I have 16 papers together with David Eisenbart. And this started out in, uh, in 2003. They had two papers in 2003 with David Eisenbart, one with uh, Gunnar Fleustadt and one with an appendix by Jared C. Weyman, um, which is called cohomology and free, uh, Chief Cohomology and Free Resolution of the XTR Algebra. And then the second one is, is this uh, resultants and Schau forms. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they cover this uh, material, uh, which I, I talked about and outlined. So I hope I convinced you that it is worthwhile to look at these things in, 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 in details. Mm -hmm. And uh, next time the, the, the I will start out improving the thing and things and uh, see what else can we do. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much.